Star Wars Rise of Skywalker left viewers with a lot of questions, and the more answers we get, the more it feels like a child giving a book report on something they did not read and are just making up as they go. This is Exasperated Nerd Explains. Clones! That's the answer for everything, at least according to the novelization, which has revealed that Palpatine did die in the Death Star, but his consciousness was transferred to a spare clone body. This is one of those answers that just raises more questions. Supposedly, it's an imperfect vessel that could not hold his immense power, which maybe explains the GLaDOS-style apparatus, the burnt-off fingertips, and real bad cataracts, but if you can do this, you can just keep going from clone body to clone body perpetually, even if they don't have a good shelf life. Then he wouldn't need to transfer into Rey, his quote-unquote granddaughter. While we are on the subject of Rey, let's talk about the Palpatine family tree. Palpatine Prime in Return of the Jedi died and entered a new clone body. The Sith continued to experiment to find a better vessel and a quote-unquote not-quite-identical clone survived. He was, quoting, a useless, powerless failure. Palpatine could not even bear to look upon such disappointing ordinariness. This disappointing clone of a clone is what they are calling his son. We made a copy from two, and now sometimes you make a copy of a copy. It's not quite as sharp as, well, the original. I like pizza. This son, a failed clone of Palpatine, is Rey's father, making Palpatine her father and grandfather? Does that mean the original Palpatine that took a dive off the Death Star balcony would count as her great-grandfather? Is that how clone lineage works? I am more confused than ever. If the failed clone is her father, Rey isn't technically a direct bloodline to this Palpatine, so can he inhabit anyone who strikes him down in anger? Would it work for anyone who is a blood relation? Does he have cousins? This means he just heard his failed clone had a kid and came up with this ridiculous scheme about possessing her, even though he was unable to find Rey for all this time. Also, the whole Raylo moment where Rey and Kylo kiss at the end, it wasn't romantic, but one of those regular everyday on the lips kisses of gratitude that friends give each other. It specifically states this. They just need to clarify that moment in order to add another layer of confusion onto this film. Thanks for saving my life. Here's a little smooch. This is in the news and is causing consternation and gnashing of teeth, but here's a dirty secret about the Star Wars novels. They are canon, but they aren't canon. Novelizations often fill in gaps or leave in scenes deleted from the final version of the film, but sometimes they add in things that the writers behind the film never even considered. If something is deleted from a movie but remains in the novelization, is it still canon? Does it hinge on whether it was cut due to runtime or because they no longer wanted it to be part of the story? It has been confirmed that at one point in the script, Palpatine said that he was something less than a clone and something more than a man, but if it's not in the movie, is that still true? Can we know which is which? My point is this can and may very well be contradicted by something else down the road. It could easily be wiped away. I remember a time when Boba Fett's real name was Jaster and he was from the planet Concord Dawn and clones had nothing to do with it, so don't talk to me about canon. Do not cite the deep magic to me, witch. I was there when it was written. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this whole cloning situation? It actually matches some of the comics that are now legends with a cloned emperor running or being puppeted around. Do you think these answers help or are they just making things worse? Let me know in the comments. Please check out my channel and subscribe if you like this sort of thing. There's lots of Star Wars videos, lots of comic book videos, etc. Bye.